Hello everyone, this is Robert from Book of Mormon Editions where we discuss printings, publications, and various editions of the Book of Mormon. Oh, what a presentation I have for you today. Some of you know that I have been working on a project in association with this YouTube series. For the past year, I've been coordinating, researching, and creating a project that I'm happy to finally announce is ready for public view, participation, and contribution. In addition to this video, I was honored that Stephen Pinecker from Mormon Book Reviews did an interview with me on this, and his interview will be posted simultaneously on his channel. I'll post the link to his video down below and encourage you to check it out. But first, as a teaser, this all started with a simple question that I've been asked numerous times through various contacts from this YouTube channel. It seems as we get closer to the 200th anniversary of the Book of Mormon, various viewers and enthusiasts are becoming more and more interested in the details of the 1830 Book of Mormon. Many individuals have asked, how many copies of the 1830 Book of Mormon have survived today? The answer currently is, we don't know. The guesses from others that I've asked have been between 200 to 2,000. At first, this is a little surprising, and then it also becomes a little frustrating. No one has previously done the research to actually get a valid copy count. As the 200th anniversary of the Book of Mormon comes closer, there is an increased interest for early printings of the Book of Mormon, and so begins a need for a project called the Book of Mormon Census that started this year in 2023. This is an academic study to archive the condition, provenance, and specific characteristics of these early printings. This includes the 1831st printing and other early editions. So I'm happy to announce this Book of Mormon Census project. And if we plan this correctly, this announcement will correspond with the 200th anniversary of Joseph Smith's angelic visit that initiated the start of all of it. So this project is an opportunity to create a central location to document these early printings through pictures, condition notes, and other details. For First, for the purpose of creating a proper copy count, and second, for enthusiasts to share in the joy of knowing more about specific copies. What are we talking about? While doing research, it seems that most early copies of the Book of Mormon are held at institutional libraries like universities or historical societies. Others are held in church archives, and finally, many of them are held with private owners. If you have a chance to see an early copy of the Book of Mormon, there's a feeling and spirit to this that's almost an electrifying experience. However, not everyone can get to church archives or specific libraries or to meet with private owners to experience this. And so as we get closer to the 200th anniversary of 1830, it becomes a great time to provide an opportunity to have Book of Mormon enthusiasts to experience this, even online. So as of September of 2023, the 200th anniversary of Joseph Smith being angelically visited, the website of bookofmormoncensus.com has been made public. The scope of the census is to collect information on many of these early sets of books of Mormon and to announce the public location of many of these, but also to keep private ownership confidential and anonymous. The sets of the census include the Palmyra 1830 edition. Obviously, this is the first printing with 5,000 originally printed. However, with mob persecution and the saints transitioning over various locations, many have been damaged or destroyed. The 1837 editions was a print run of 3,000, but was also a Poxide's second edition. Because of this, these were often discarded or lost. The 1840 edition was made while the saints were in Nauvoo. Many of these were used by the saints moving westward, and many stayed behind. So these were heavily used and less remain today. The 1841 edition was printed in Great Britain. The inspiring fact was that many of those that survive today and are in America are the ones that were in the hands of migrants from Europe, and the Book of Mormon crossed the seas with these early pioneers. The 1842 edition was similar to the 1840 edition, 
and but only a, had a print run of 640 copies. So it will be interesting to discover which of these have survived. Included in this project is tracking the 1869 Desert Alphabet volumes. And I've had many reach out to me on this specific project and are really excited to see a census list for this. However, only 500 were printed and we'll see how many we can trace. One of my favorites is the 1899 Nephite Records volume, as this was printed for and used for members of the restoration outside of traditional Salt Lake or RLDS platforms. Also, there is a list of honorable mentions that's included in the census, as one-of-a-kind volumes are unique and noteworthy, especially the background details and provenance are worth noting. What is currently included in the website at the time of this video is just a start, and we are excited to see the momentum build on this project as more volumes are submitted and entered into the website. What was truly significant was when university libraries were started to be contacted. When explaining this project, many university rare book libraries were really excited to help out. Librarians are really awesome people, and many of them said it's about time to have this project. After discovering that we had started the census, librarians were more than happy to supply pictures, documentation, and provenance on their copies. What was interesting was often the university libraries did not know what they had. One example was when a university supplied pictures of one of their copies in their rare book collection. The, inspira the inscription was, quote, property of Mary Cahoon, given to her by her son Reynolds Cahoon, High Priest and Counsel for the Bishop of the Church of the Latter-day Saints in Kirtland, end quote, signed Mary Cahoon. We educated the university that they hold a copy given to the mother of Reynolds Cahoon, who is a significant early member of the church while he was in Kirtland, Ohio. To me, it was amazing to see a mother's impression of a book given by her son and that she was proud to list his accomplishments of the time. Another example was discovering a signature of Joseph Smith III in Plano, Illinois, shortly after the reorganization of the church and the RLDS community. It's interesting that this copy passed through the hands of Joseph III as he gave it to someone else, but matches the headquarters of Plano, Illinois in his adult life. Another university admitted not knowing much about their copy when they submitted pictures to review. This specific volume had an inscription of, quote, Lizzie Sherman, presented by Joe Smith Apostle, Salt Lake, 1870. At first, this didn't make any sense. However, after reviewing it with Brent Ashworth of Provo, Utah, he encouraged further investigation, especially looking at the name of Sherman in the late 1800s, in the mid-late 1800s. So after researching, it was discovered that this copy was given by Joseph F. Smith, the, the nephew of the prophet Joseph and leader of the, one of the leaders of the church, to a woman by the name of Lizzie. And most amazing characteristic was that this was in the handwriting of her father, William T. Sherman. You'll recognize him as the notable general for the Union Army during the Civil War. The university expressed their appreciation when they discovered they had a church historical item related to a Civil War general. We're already hugely grateful for Rare Book Libraries for their continuing support on this project. This is a great opportunity for universities to collaborate with the project and give an opportunity for a centralized collection to recognize the preservation of these copies. This is the same with the church archives, especially within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Salt Lake City and the Community of Christ in Missouri. Over time, the churches have acquired various copies, and rightfully so, as these organizations have a privilege of preserving their heritage while sometimes showcasing these for their members. One of the highlights to the Church Historical Museum in Salt Lake City is a simple case displaying Phineas Young 1830 copy of the Book of Mormon. This specific copy was influential in converting his brother Brigham Young to the restored gospel. The blessing is that it's on display for individuals to view and see the significance of this copy. President Hinckley often expressed that church history sites and displays are for the strengthening of the testimony of the members. 
The Book of Mormon Census Project assists in this endeavor also. There's a vast number of church members that don't have the ability to visit church history sites or gain access to church archives. As the census has an online capacity to display pictures and provide background story notes of individual copies, members have the opportunity to view these to develop their faith. Some of the most interesting volumes of the Book of Mormon are held in the hands of private individuals also. I've had a huge admiration for those private owners who have kept stewardship over these historical treasures. So while keeping ownership private, it's been wonderful to see private owners participate in the census project and for them to understand the lasting legacy that they're creating by showcasing these privately owned copies. Even from the start of this project, we've seen that each privately held copy is unique and special, no matter if there is historical providence or not. One of these highlighted private copies is the Hiram Smith 1830 volume, where there is an inscription that this was originally Hiram Smith's copy, where it was transferred to Reynolds Cahoon and then passed to Reynolds' son Pulaski, who lived in Missouri, while the saints moved westward. There's been a few articles published about this, which also includes information about an African-American family who had this in their possession for many generations, before it changed hands a few times in recent years. Also in private collection is Oliver Cowdery's personal 1837 Book of Mormon. It's stated that Oliver personally bound this copy as he was responsible for the bindery process for the 1837 Book of Mormon. This is an amazing little book, and I was honored that this made it into the census for all to experience. It's also noteworthy to see many private copies held for generations in families, even if they are not owned by notable in early individuals. The idea that they've survived in family hands all these years is truly inspiring. Right from the start of this project, we've also learned some interesting things. One idea is that many times the title page of the 1830 volume would have diamond-shaped crease lines. One university asked about this and wanted to know if their copy was the only one like this. This is called cockling and is due to the aging process of the paper and bindery. This is similar to a newspaper drying out in the sun, and it's interesting to know that it's actually common for many of these copies of the 1830 Book of Mormon to have it. What's also interesting is that no two title pages are alike, and it almost becomes a fingerprint identifier for each volume. We've also seen some interesting textual variations from the start. This is due to the printer running the press, then finding typeset errors, and then stopping the press run. They would make changes to the printing plate and start the printing again, but keep the old pages in the printed stack. For example, the 1830 preface page has Roman numerals on its back page, but there is a difference in the variances between Roman numeral 4 and Roman numeral 6. In addition, page 212 has a numbering error, and most of them are listed as 122. On page 521, you can also see a typesetter's frustration when dealing with a longer word, but running out of room, so he had to split the word and wrap it around with a hyphenated word. But in doing so, he confused the typesetting, and instead of the word murderers with a hyphen, it was something different. However, finding all of the er type errors in all of the copies is currently out of the scope of the census, as it would be more intrusive than useful, especially with private individuals. But it's still interesting to see real-life examples of typeset changes when they can be found. All in all, this project is to provide a central location to safely collect pictures and provenance on early copies of the Book of Mormon for the reason of, first, understanding how many of these early copies still survive, and second, to build the faith of those that experience the Book of Mormon, especially for those who might not get a chance to see these up close otherwise. The last example is one closest to my heart, and once you see this one, you'll see why. On display at the Church History Library is a dark cover 1841 Book of Mormon and is listed as the Carthage Jail copy. This was held by Hiram Smith and read to the Prophet Joseph before they were martyred in jail. This copy was with them in jail 
and all that transpired there. Stephen Beinecker from Mormon Book Reviews, who considers himself an outsider, said something profound when he commented on how amazing the Book of Mormon is, and this is what was read for their spiritual sustenance, even when Joseph and Hiram were facing their demise. So I'm excited to announce the Book of Mormon Census is now online at bookofmormoncensus.com. The invitation for all is to support this by going online, as we'll record more entries as more copies are submitted and archived. Also, if you or a loved one have any of these early copies, to contact us through the website so we can work the details and help you feel confident that owners will remain anonymous as we record privately owned copies. For those working in institutions, libraries, or church archives, please continue to support this by allowing access to the archives. This project will continue to be more useful as more submissions are recorded. So a heartfelt thank you to those that have supported this project even before it was publicly announced. And thank you to those viewers here staying for all this time. We will continue to post videos here, and I'm excited to cross-reference the Census Project and this YouTube series. So as always, if you have a special or unique copy of the Book of Mormon, especially in early printing, that has survived all this time, please feel free to contact me at bomeditions at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone.